Good afternoon. I want to tell you a story about a young black kid growing up on the east side of Kansas City in a small house there. I want you to see this child in your mind. Hope you have an image. He's a, a bright kid. He's curious. He's pretty damn funny. <laughs> he has dreams. He has big fears. But he's bright and he's curious. He gets into trouble every now and then, but usually it's the kind of trouble that young boys get into because they don't know when to stop talking. But he's a good kid and he's a smart kid. And he's sitting on the staircase in the attic of his home reading a Doc Savage book so that he can get away from his rambunctious brothers, the three of them that live in the same bedroom with him. Inside that book, he discovers an entire world that fuels his dreams, shapes his mind, fuels his imagination. On the outside, though, he lives in a world over which he has no control whatsoever. There are people, people who are going to come into his life, and they're going to influence this young child's life by their actions and by what they value. It might be his brothers. It might be his parents. It might be friends from the neighborhood. It might be some stranger he encounters on any specific day. But whoever it is, they're going to guide him, they're going to influence his life, and they're going to place value on something that is going to shape his very life and who this little boy becomes. His life, his entire life, is going to be determined simply by the people around him during these formative years. So I want you to think about that for just a minute. I want you to think about that not just for this kid, but for any kid. Think about what that might mean for him, Think about what that may have meant for you. Think about what it means for children generally. For a child, any child, I don't care if they live on the east side in a small house or north of the river in a five-room, five-bedroom colonial, the people who come into their lives during their formative years and the experiences they have as a child shape who they become and what they'll do and what mark they'll leave on their city, their country, and the world. They'll leave a good mark, a bad mark, maybe even an ugly mark. But I tell you this because what happens to a child during their formative years really does matter. It matters to the people who know them. It matters to people who don't. It matters to people who may never know this child. But let me tell you, because the roads that this child chooses to take in his life will make him either a contributing member of society or not. And I don't need to paint that not picture for you. I think we're all on the same page there. But I want you to imagine an entire city of children just like that one that you imagined earlier in the story. And ask yourself this very simple question. What happens to children when the right people come into their life? And what happens to children when they don't? I want to let you know that there's a great equalizer in life in this city. It matters for this child and every child in this city, and that's education. And if we put the right emphasis on education in this city, we lay the groundwork for all the things that come thereafter. Here's why education is important, okay? Crime is a problem that we have in this city. Every urban area has crime and problems, and it often tends to predominate and preside most commonly in areas of low employment, underemployment, low-paying jobs, and poverty. Jobs. Generally, we believe the better education you have, the better job you're going to be able to get. So education is that small solution to that big challenge of how do we make this city best. The solution, though, is not as small as you might think. Where to start with this? Education researchers tell us all the time that you start at the beginning, duh. Why wouldn't you start at the beginning? You start when the child is born. And we know that third grade reading proficiency is a key, a key educational measure. It's a huge benchmark. We learn to read up to third grade, and we read to learn from third grade going forward. Turn the Page KC is a program that I started shortly after I took office in 2011. It's a small solution. We read to kids. We read with kids, we have kids read to us, and we do everything we can to help them learn to read. We start it small, 
But now we have over 600 volunteers who read to and mentor kids across the city. We also have, have attracted a proven tutorial program that places 23 highly trained tutors with, uh, in schools working with K through K, uh, three uh, kids all the time, every day. And from that simple solution base with Turn to Page KC, we've established three essential pillars. The first one is school readiness. The second is summer learning. And the third is school attendance. With school readiness, obviously, we want every child to be able to read by third grade proficiently, but in order to do that, they need to enter kindergarten ready to learn. And a key benchmark for kindergarten readiness is that 30 million word gap. That's the gap that we know from research tells us that a child raised in poverty will hear 30 million fewer words by the time they're three years old than a child raised in more affluent circumstances. We know that typically a middle, a middle class child reaching first grade has had over 1,000 to 1,700 hours of picture book reading. Compare that to a child reaching first grade from a lower income family with an average of 25 hours of picture book reading. The more positive the home learning environment, often found in more financially affluent homes, the better. It's exactly the opposite for the lower earning homes. That learning environment is not as positive. We have a small solution for that, and that small solution is working with the Family Conservancy, a group that preaches talk, read, and play with your child every day. They have a program where they can attach, and we're a beta in their program, where they have a lena. It's a vest that you put on the child that actually counts and measures the number of words that child hears. Not just artificial words, but connected words. Another important metric, metric that we use is children are also more likely to start kindergarten ready to learn if they've been in high quality preschool early learning programs but only about 50% of Kansas City's four-year-olds reach those programs. Turn the page over the next year, we'll be working with other organizations in order to increase the number of high-quality licensed preschool programs for kids across our city. But still, we have to start even earlier than that. And it has to involve the entire family. So last spring, up through Father's Day, we had a program called Hashtag Dads Turn the Page. And what we did was we put books in barber shops. Dads bring their kids to the barber shop. They read to their kids while they're waiting to get their hair cut. And then they can take the book home and read to their kids there. That's something that we like to do. We also partnered with Children's Mercy Hospital to give books to parents as they delivered babies, brought their babies back in for a wellness visits. And they could take those books home and read to their kids as well. During the summer, when we are focused on summer learning and summer reading, because now that we've given them books and they're in school, we know that they have to read during the summer or they'll fall behind. But during the summer months, we know that a child can lose up to two months of literacy, learning, and skills just over the summer. And we know that when kids move around a lot in this city that has 15 school districts in whole or in part and hundreds of schools, when a child moves, he may not just be moving from one school to another, he may be moving from one district to another. So this past fall, we partnered with Grad Nation, an organization focused on student mobility, to hold the first annual student mobility conference here in Kansas City and put together programs and practices that would reduce that student mobility and increase student attendance. And it looks like it's working, but we are making progress but we're no place near being done. Yeah, reading proficiency has increased because in 2011, we started with a baseline of about 33% on average of the kids across the 15 districts in Kansas City reading at proficiency at third grade. Today, that number is up to 49%, still too short. We're shooting for 70. And when we get to 70, we're going to shoot for even higher than that. But this work isn't easy, but then again, no work that's valuable or important ever is. We know it's necessary, though, because it is absolutely critical to the vitality and life of this city that we have a well-educated populace because it will affect this city for years and years to come. You're welcome to join us. All you got to do is check out the website at turntopagekc.org and sign up. 
On the road to life, you reach many milestones, but you reach them all before you get to that final destination. And we're not at that destination. What I've described to you are some milestones that we've reached. But improving education is guiding us on this road for, to better jobs, to better lives, and to happier citizens in this city. We're still on the road, but we're closer to the destination that we've been on for quite some time. And I can't think of any greater impact on a city like this than to make sure that our future leaders have the best possible education they could have. So when I came out here, I told you I was going to tell you a story about a little black kid growing up on the east side of Kansas City. And I asked you to picture him, and I hope that you were able to do that. I asked you to think about his dreams and fears, etc. And I ask you to imagine the people that would come into this young kid's life. This little boy with the black curly hair and the smart mouth, the big dreams, reading Doc Savage books on the steps of the attic while his parents and his three brothers slept. Well, that was me. And I'll tell you this, the people who surrounded me in my life emphasized education, and if it wasn't for their emphasis on education from beginning to end, I wouldn't be able to stand here in front of you today. And I'm nobody special, but I'll tell you this, every child in this city deserves the same sort of attention, support, and emphasis from the people in their lives. And we can do that, and we can make Kansas City best if education matters to every single person in the city. Thank you very much. <laughs>